Okay, push the line underneath the filler tube, over the spare tire, and then over that metal bracket that's on top of the spare tire, okay? Now we're gonna raise it up and we're gonna go underneath and find that fitting in line and try to get it started. Okay, I found the line, I pulled it through, and I got my fitting started on my line. Tighten it up a little bit, and then I got my vice grips. I put my vice grips on the bracket, and then I fully tightened my uh, fitting. And now I can undo my vice grips and put my bracket up in there and find out where that little notch goes, you know, in the bottom. A little notch right there, and then find out where my bolt goes, and then put my bolt in. Put some anesthes on your fittings and on that bolt. Okay. What you need to do is find where the bolt hole is first and then, then you'll find where the notch goes. And then get it in and then put your bolt in and tighten your bolt up with your 13 millimeter ratchet wrench. And then when it's up there, then go ahead and see if you can tighten that fitting up just an extra oomph, okay? All right, now when we're done with this, we're gonna go back to the ABS Get it, and I'm gonna start that line, okay? Put some anesthes on that uh, fitting too. Okay, you're gonna put that line on that ABS unit right here, rear one. It kind of like fits right in there. You'll, you can't mistake in it, okay? So, and then you got the, the right front and then your left front and then your master cylinder front and rear, okay? You work this way you go. Boom, 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 okay? Can't really see it, but okay. Get it in there. Got any C's on it. Tighten her up. Okay, come into the back and put your harness back where they belong. And then put your inner skirt back in. Okay, inner skirt's in. Now we work on the right front. Right front is the longest one. Got all the loops in it, okay? So get it out of plastic and straighten your spots where the white tape is. So, there it is. How the heck you get that long ass thing in there, huh? <laughs> Good idea. Take the long part of it and shove it behind the wire harness and the washer hose and then shove it down through here and keep on pushing it to almost bottoms out so like that see now it's dangling down there okay so now we're going to force this in down here underneath that and we're going to put it down okay to the left of the power steering lines right there so we're going to come right here all right okay you had that Remember you had it in there, push it far in here as you need to get it. So you can fish that line through there. Okay. And it has to go on the other side of the power steering lines and on the other side of the power steering gearbox. Okay. And then make sure you got your full loop over here. Okay. Well, it looks good. So, and also then, open up this thing here to hold your wire, your hoses. This is a goofy ass, uh, see the inside part, the bottom of it? You gotta push that in, and then you gotta pry it apart, <clears throat> okay? It's always easier to see what they are looking like when there's no lines in them, okay? See it, how it goes? You gotta push that little tab in and you can pry it apart. This line goes not on the bottom, but goes on top. Goes on top of the left front one. So we're not gonna push it in there until we get the left front line in. But now we're gonna put the, the right front line in on the other side to the right front. But we gotta fish it up through there from the bottom, okay? All right, we need to push this line up through here, through that hole up there. Okay, so it comes out. 
So it comes out over here, all right? So we can take it over there. What you do is as you push this line through here, just get it up in there, reach your hand up in here and grab it and pull it and push it at the same time and get that one corner section over there. And then straighten it out as best you can and push it in these clips. Okay, there's also a clip right up in here, push it in there. All right, and you can put your harness back into that loom holder too. Okay, so let's see how close it is. So now I'm gonna lower it down and I'm gonna put my fitting on. All right, get your line in there, put some ASCs on, get it started, tighten it up. And loosen it up, tighten it up, loosen it up, tighten it up, and then, then loosen it up quite a bit to allow it to breathe, okay? So now we gotta go to the other side and we gotta connect it to the ABS unit itself. See how the line is just hanging it on? Now we gotta shove it up over the frame and get it into the ABS unit. Okay, because then this one goes into the hole next to the line we just put in from the back, okay? Just remember, <laughs> nothing's perfect, all right? If you gotta bend the lines to get them to where they go, need to go, then you gotta bend the lines to put them where they need to go. You can always bend them back, just don't kink them, okay? All right? Get it up in there, tighten it up, and uh, one next to it, is gonna be the right front. No, left front, sorry. We just installed the left front. All right, so there it is, right there. All right, okay, here's the next one. See, it's got the curve to go down, you got the curve that goes back. Okay, because that goes into the ABS module and that goes to the line. Fish this one down through behind and down through there as best you can. It's kind of bound up a little bit. I need to go down below and see what's going on. Okay, so I might as well hook up that section first. Because I need to get this in this bracket down below. You know, this piece here, this line needs to go in there. And then that one go on, or the other one, the right one go on top, and then I can flip this over. Okay, so I'm gonna raise it up, and check it out. And then it was sticking out, so I shoved it up in there, and I pulled it up through. So that's the way it's looking now. So it goes over the right line, not underneath it. Okay. So now all you gotta do is get it started. You gonna put some ANSI's on, get it started, and tighten it up. Okay. I got the three top ones in. All right. Now we just gotta go back over there and straighten this line out up here and get that in there. I say it's a mess. Uh, I got that one started, tightened it up, and then loosened it up. Shoved it over here into that one. I gotta get the two lines from the master to go through here. And then I can close it, and then I can put this one over the top. All right. Remember, it's, remember on this bracket back here, it's right front, left front. Uh, and the two masters, uh, probably the rear and then the left and then the front one. And then put your, put this line inside here. When everything's done, you can straighten it up a little bit. Right now, we just need to get the lines in there. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is master cylinder lines. The next line on our list will be master cylinder front and then the rear one. 
Okay, line up your lines that you got, your two left. Line them up the best you can. And what you're doing is you're looking for which one's the front and which one's the back. Okay, the front one's gonna be the longest one. So this is the longest, okay? And it's also gonna be the shortest over on this end, okay? So this is the one we want. All right, so all we need to do is stick that down through there on the inside of that wire harness. And this end goes to the uh, proportioning valve. Stick it down through inside here, behind the harness, fish it through, pull it through, and then stick it up over the top. Ah. And then you wanna go in underneath all the brake lines and then put it in the spot on the ABS unit, okay? Remember when we're on the far right of the ABS unit, according to a little picture, okay? So it looks pretty good underneath, so I'm gonna straighten it out and get it started and tighten it up underneath. And then I'll go on top. Okay. There it is. It's in there, it's tight. Okay. Now I gotta lower it down and get it up to the master uh, proportioning valve. Okay. Okay, I got it in the front. Got it in where I want back here. But that all gonna change when you push the other one in and they all pop out. So now I need to do is fish the rear master proportioning valve to the back and put it in the uh, ABS unit. All right, I shoved it in there. Now I gotta go underneath and straighten it out. Okay, I straightened it out. I pulled it through and I pushed it underneath all the other lines and I got it in there. Okay, that's the way they look, all right? Looks good that way. So now I'm gonna put some manises on it and get started and tighten it up. All right, and they're all on there. Okay, all on there and they're all tight. See how they look? Get an idea? Remember the last two went on underneath the others. Okay. All right, so now I'm gonna go on top and get it down to the proportioning valve. All right, guide that back back one to the rear. Get it in there. All right. What I did is I pulled this one forward and I shoved the rear one to the side of it. So what do I got? I got just the way the bracket was. This is I got front rear left right and the left don't fit in there at the bracket very good but i do have these in there they fit nice but this one just don't fit in there very good that's fine so what i'll do is i get a big zip tie and i'll zip tie it down through here and that'll hold it steady now i can put all my stuff back together but now I got to do these lines off the master to the proportioning valve, okay? Those are these short ones right here. Okay, cut the ones off the master to the proportioning valve. All right, and then remove the fittings, okay? Now here they are, the ones that go master to the proportioning valve. Best way to do it is to eyeball them, see which one looks the best in there, fits the best, because they're not really marked. So, I'm going to try this one to go to the front. I'm going to try this one to the front, because this one hits the, I think, the fuse box. Yep, the other one was the front one. Okay, I got them in there. All right, the long one went to the front. All right, so now all I need to do is... 
Ah. Ah. Make sure everything looks good. I put the zip tie on here, got that down. So now you do is put all this back together. Make sure you push this one down inside there, make it all look good. And then you can put your skirt in. And make sure you tightened up all your fittings. Cause remember I told you to leave this one loose, so tighten them both up. All right. Now you can put your harnesses back in where they belong, down here and up there. Okay. Okay, you got the inner fender skirt back in. All right. Now we do is we go to the back. Cut your lines at the T for the brick lines. We moved a 13 millimeter right here and cut the brake line at the, at the flex hose for the caliper. And then remove this line right there. And then on this side, you wanna undo this plastic clip right here. Lift that up. That's for this one. You wanna cut your T line up on top. Take this 13 millimeter out bolt for this line. Cut your line up here where the hose, flex hose is for the line. Cut that one out. All right. Now you open this plastic up so you can get the hose out of there, metal one out of there. All right. So now you got that one done. Now I'll remove the fittings, two up on top. And one on each side. You got two lines left. Long one goes on the right side, shorter one goes on the left side. Put some manicis on your fitting ends and put them on. Okay, you got your rear brake, light and brake lines on. Tighten them up at the T above the differential. And leave the ones at the wheels loose. You know, at the calipers, leave those loose. Okay, so now we're ready to bleed the brakes. Okay, so then you lower it down and you're gonna fill up the master cylinder with brake fluid and leave the cap off and let it gravity bleed. Okay, you let it gravity bleed for a while and see if any if the fluid comes out. If you wanna help it out, you can push the pedal to the floor a couple of times, okay? But what you wanna do is you want it to gravity bleed. You want it to come out all four so all four wheels out where the brake lines were. Okay, time to bleed. Now, if you remember, I told you to leave the lines at the wheels where it goes into the flex lines, those fittings, front and rear, at the tires. I told you to leave them fittings loose, okay? So what we wanna do is we want it to gravity bleed, hopefully a gravity bleed. But if it's taking its sweet old time, not making it there, then fill up and make sure your mess cylinder is full. Start the vehicle and pump the pedal until you get fluid out a particular wheel, okay? And then go and tighten that fitting up and then keep doing it till you get them out the rest of the fittings, okay? The ones at each wheel, all right? Okay. Pop it off. You keep adding fluid, it's eventually gonna make it there. As long as the fluid's going down, it's going somewhere. So keep looking at your wheels, you know, for the fluid coming down. Okay, I can feel it in the pedal. I can feel it, I'm pushing fluid. Okay, I'm, the fluid's coming out of the right front. So I'll tighten the right front fitting and more fluid. If you uh, keep pumping in and you don't feel like there's anything coming out anywhere, then I think it's possible you need to bleed the master cylinder. What you do is you undo the lines and you just let it drip. Get the air out of the master because once you, if you got air in the master, it creates a pocket. And then it, it won't allow you to do anything. And if you look at it, you'll watch the bubbles come out. So you want to watch for the bubbles, okay? If you see it dripping, it'd be good. I want to push it to the floor and see if I can push some of the air out of the master. 
All right. I got some out of the front and I got some out of the back. It ain't pumping out in the back like I really expect it to. So, but now I'm gonna try something different. I'm gonna raise it up and I'm gonna open them up and see if I can get the gravity bleed. It's gotta have an air pocket in it somewhere. And it's probably inside the master. Okay. See how that one's doing that? That's gravity bleeding, okay? I can get by, most of the time I can get by without having to open up the bleeders. And you think you're gonna get that bleeder open? No. So, so I didn't lose the fluid in this flex line, so the fluid should be like right there. So when the fluid comes down this hose, it's mixing with the air and the old fluid right there, and it's pushing air bubbles out. So, shouldn't be any air bubbles left in that one. So then now I'm gonna tighten this one up. It's still dripping, see? I just want them barely on there. So it has no restriction. Tighten it up. Okay, now I'll go and watch my other side. It should have it should increase a little bit. dripping but it's slow so I'm gonna open it up a little bit more maybe that'll help it flow okay and then I'll go around and do that and then I'll uh, I'll go around and I'll close them all and then lower it down and I'll uh, push my pedal to the floor a couple times push the pedal down to the floor a couple times see if I can you know Help push the air along a little bit and see if I can get a better pedal. So that's what I'm gonna do now. There's my left rear. She's a dripping gravity bleeding pretty darn good. There's my right rear. It's gravity bleeding too. The trick is to have them really loose, okay? Just let them drip for a while and then tighten them up and then lower it down and I'll go inside there and hit the brake a couple of times, get the pump, pedal pumped up best you can and then go around and bleed them again. Or you could, you can also have somebody else help you bleed them. You would uh, make sure the master cylinder is full fluid. Have your partner inside, have it running. And what you do is you go and open up the bleeder at the right rear or loosen your line at the right rear and say down and then they push the pedal down and when the pedal's down they say down and then you go and tighten it you tell them up and then when the pedal goes up they tell you up and then that's when you open it up again and you, you tell them down and then they push the pedal down and then they tell you down, and you tell them up, and they tell you up, and that's, you know, just like that. That's how you get your communication. All right, now I'm gonna lower it down, and I'm gonna pump my pedal. <sighs> Once you went around, bled it a bunch of times, and you're satisfied with the pedal, that's good, because also, when your brakes, are old and crappy and looking like this. When you push the pedal down, everything's moving like this. So you're taking like a big shock absorber in there. So you're gonna get a crappy pedal too. So if you can get your bleeders loose, great, bleed it that way. I got my front two loose. I didn't get no air out of them. And the back are frozen. I can get it out of the line. I don't get no air. I got a halfway decent pedal. Now I'm gonna drive it and see how it goes. But most of the time, I'd say 80% of the time, 
I get a good pedal just by doing them at the line right there. Front and back, okay? I don't have to mess with the bleeders. So I'm pretty sure that it's my brakes that are causing the problem because the front and the back are pretty crappy looking. So, okay, that's how you do the brake lines. The bleeding part, that takes time, okay. And just remember, if I helped you out with the brake lines, made it help you out, with, made the job a little bit more easier for you, that's great. And if you could subscribe to me, that'd be awesome. If you already are subscribed to me, that's even better. And I do appreciate it. And thank you very much.